Okay, back for another video. This has been on my mind tonight. Just came to me. So let's say you're a Christian. What do you want in life? I mean, you have examples, many, many examples in the Bible. Who do you want to be like? This is a want. This is your desires. You want to be like Noah. Maybe you like woodworking. Maybe you're good with your hands. Maybe you like animals. Okay, how about Jonah? Maybe you like to go for a swim. Maybe you want to be one of the first to go somewhere in a submarine. Oh, that's already been done. Okay. How about a living submarine? Okay, well, maybe you want to be like Solomon. Really? How many wives? Really? More than one? Oh, come on. No, thank you. David? Oops. Had his rooftop failure, living in sin moment. Definitely came to repentance. It was, what, Psalm 51 off the top of my head? Yeah. Who else do you want to be like? Moses? How about Joseph? I think a lot of people would look at Joseph and go, well, now that I know the end of his life, yeah, I want to be like Joseph. <laughs> do you think Joseph had that choice? Here, God, show me the end of my life, and then, then, I'll, then I'll follow you. Then I'll... Be obedient. I'll be faithful. I'll live putting you first in my life over everything else. I'll deny myself of physical, fleshly pleasures and sin. Even when a rich, well-off, probably well-taken-care-of woman wants you, and Joseph's like, not happening. I'm not putting in my physical, lustful, sinful desires or temptations above or before God. It would be an offense. And then to be accused of rape. And he already knew what that experience was like from his point of view to somebody in his family. He was faithful. And God blessed him. How many of us look at our lives and go, Oh, look at this. It's perfect. God's blessed me. And if we look at our lives going, Have we lived anything like Joseph? I mean, do you want to live through that experience? Joseph was in a dysfunctional situation with his family. I thought his father would have guided him better when it came to his dreams that God gave him. But no, no, let's throw on a coat of many colors. Joseph's my favorite. Great, fuel the fire. All his brothers hated him. Could you blame him? All it did was bring out what was in their hearts. Just added more and more fuel to the fire until they couldn't take it anymore. Oh, great, look who's coming. Let's kill him. Let's do this, let's do that. And God used their hardness of heart, their bitterness, their jealousy, whatever it may be, their sin. To lead Joseph into the next chapter of his life, a season of his life that nobody would want. I don't want that to happen to anybody. But God uses what he has to. What pe people mean for evil, God uses for good for those that love him, those that are faithful, those that obey his commandments. We only have two to obey. First, love God, and second, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, first you have to love yourself. I didn't love myself for decades. I did what many people do. Look in the mirror. 
Look on TV. Let's look in society. Compare yourself to your friends. And Satan's there the whole time, whispering in your ear. Thoughts in your head about, yep, see? You're rejected because you're not good enough compared to your friends or the person they moved on to or whatever. And we listen. I'm curious. I don't know how it works, but does God give everybody the same level of attractiveness? Some people have it all on the outside. Some people have it all on the inside. And some have a mixture of both. I didn't think I had any of it. Because I was broken very early on in my life by my family. But then by myself and by life. Well, I guess if you've got hardness, God needs to break it. Kind of the example I could think of is like the chocolate processing machines have those rollers and there you got a really fine thin layer between the two rollers and any sort of lump would be broken up by the rollers. That's kind of how I feel that God's been doing with me out here in the wilderness for almost two years. He removed me from a situation where I was causing pain and hurting people and, and the other way around was happening also. And God gave me an opportunity to be isolated like Joseph was. Believe me, I'm not as good as Joseph. I had a lot, a lot of wounds to have God remove and healing to take place. But who are we to know what we want? Better yet, who are we to know what we need? When life doesn't go the way you'd hope or want, that's your test. That's your trial. God already knows what's in your heart, but you don't. And life will bring from the depths of your heart to the surface what's in it. God wants that to happen so he can remove it. For you to be made aware of it so you can see it, understand it, and give it to him. Lord, search my heart through and through. Bring up anything that's inside of my heart that is not godly and not from you. Scars, wounds, hurt, pain, bruises, sinfulness. Wash me. Wash me with your Live in water, your spirit, and cleanse me. Wash me with blood. Make me new. Think of everything Joseph went through. And then, did Joseph orchestrate what took place? No, he was only faithful and obedient. Committed to God and God first. If you want an example to follow, follow that. If you've been living by your flesh, it has to die. It has to be separated from you, the new you, as born again. No longer led by your flesh and the venom from the serpent that's deep within. But now you're led by God's spirit. Not reacting out of your flesh but live by his love and the desires he puts in your heart. And then let him bless you. Let the seeds that you plant from your new heart that God gives you, give them time to grow. Trust God with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't go to the rock and hit it twice when God said just speak to it to get water. God doesn't need any help from you. Jesus, I'm going to go do what I must do for 30 pieces of silver because you need my help for you to do my agenda to establish your kingdom now 
God, I'm going to force you to do it now because I want it now. She just didn't get what he wanted. Choose today how you're going to live your life. Who's in charge? Who's leading you? Is God leading you? Are you deciding? Or are you being misled and misguided by Satan? Your friends, your company. What do I want most in life? To please God with all my heart. To love my family and treat them right. Even if they don't. During the separation, it's been a crazy time. Hearing from many different people their thoughts and ideas about marriage. Some are like, well, here you are with no place to live, at least of your own. God has provided for me six months before I needed this. When he brought somebody into my life I hadn't seen in a little while, ran into him in a hardware store place I didn't normally go to because there's some practices that I don't agree with. But I went in this night just to look at some tools, just kill some time, had a daydream. I'm walking in the store and back of my head I hear a small voice. Hey, you know him. This guy's about four or five rows up. I didn't recognize this guy, 270 pounds, bald, big guy, didn't look like anybody I knew. But at the same time, after that small voice, I heard a very loud voice yelling at me, No, you don't, in the front of my head. I was still in bondage at the time. So I passed this guy, went into the tool section, I'm looking at the tools. Next you know, in my left ear, I hear, Hey, is your name Rick? And I turn, and it's that guy. I was like, Wow. I said, Well, actually, I go by Rich. And he said, I think I played Little League Baseball with you. And I was like, Come on. That's 42 years ago. Okay, the last time we played was 41 years. I was 12. I was 53 when I ran into him. He had the same small voice. said, you know him. He tried to say my last name. He got the, the, the R and the C right. Then he said his name, and I remember him fondly. Great player. Beautiful swing. Boy, I could hit the ball. Great attitude, personality. Six months later, I'm standing at his house. Here I am a year and a half later, staying at another one of his houses. Doing some home reno. Doing some car repairs. Kind of at his beck and call. But God's been changing my heart. Changing my life one day at a time. I have a roommate staying here with me. Another man in a rough marital situation. Recently divorced. After 26 years. His flesh got in the way. And so much more. God's been pulling a lot of strings behind the scenes. There's so much more to it. But what do you want in life? Do you want everything of the world that you see? Are you awestruck? Oh, I want this and that and that and that. Oh, I wish I was like Bill Gates. I want all his money. Well, did you do the work that he had to to get there? And look where he is now. Do you want to be there too? I don't want all that money. I've had to live his lifestyle and end up where he is today. I don't want it. What do I want most? From the world. To be loved. And to love. Those that God puts in my life. Starting with my wife. My children. And anybody else that needs God's love. I hope and pray that my transparency and my sharing will help others who are struggling as I have. The most important thing is God made you the way you are and the world contaminated it. You were born in sin and as you lived day by day in this world that is filled with darkness and evil, 
it contaminates the outer layer, the outside of what God created, trying to destroy the inside creation. All I can say is I have a video, it's like looking at you through God's eyes. Look at yourself through God's eyes. He doesn't have scales in them. He sees you clearly. He knows when he made you, why he made you, how he made you, for what purpose he made you. He knows all these things. And in time, he'll let us see it too. Pray this prayer. God, tonight, would you please show me what you see when you look at me. I don't trust what I see with my eyes because I live in a world that is distorted and deceived by the venom from the serpent. God, I'm struggling with how I see myself, comparing myself to somebody else, rejecting myself, hating myself. Some people may be wishing they were never born. Maybe some people wishing they die just to get the pain over with. Well, all those things I just said, that was me for many years of my life. My teenage years were very painful. So painful I wanted it to end no matter what. Thankfully it didn't. That would have been a very foolish, stupid night. But I wasn't prepared to handle alone the emotional pain that I experienced. And then to find out last year that what I thought took place didn't. And I could have killed myself, believing a lie. And I know where the lie came from. And I don't know how many people I've helped over the years that I wouldn't have been able to if I was gone. And no, it wouldn't have made things better for my family or my friends or the wife that needed me in 2000 and beyond and who still needs me. But she needs the old me back not the broken one. Well, I'm sorry, honey. God had to allow life to break me so he could reshape me into who he created me to be originally. I hope and pray we have an opportunity to try again. And if anybody else is struggling with suicidal thoughts, please get help. Not self-help. God loves you. I love you, and there's going to be other people in your life who will love you. And I want somebody to love you for who you are, not for what you do. Because that's love. Jesus loved us enough to leave heaven and come to earth and suffer on the cross so that we might live. He came to show us how much we're worth to him. Life is worth it. The struggle is painful. It's hard. But even then, good things come out of it. I hope and pray that if anybody's struggling with suicidal thoughts, giving up, wanting the pain to end, I hope and pray that God will protect you and keep you from opening doors and walking in to things that God would not want you to do. Drugs, alcohol, risky lifestyles, whatever it may be that you think you need to do to numb the pain, to get you through one more day. I hope and pray that you will get what you really need that you will cry out to God with your brokenness, your desperation, and say, Lord, I need you. Jesus, help me. I believe, but help my unbelief. Touch my heart and my life in a way to take away my doubts, my fears, my unbelief. I want to know that you're real. 
It's like this person making the video knows you're real. I want to love you like this person loves you. I want to trust you like this person trusts you, even when he's alone in the wilderness. Sometimes when life doesn't go the way you want or hope, it's because God's preparing you for what he has next. Don't give up. Hang in there. Trust him enough to give him one more day. And then when that day ends and a new one begins, trust him for another day. And if you're still struggling, reach out to me. I'll pray for you. I'll encourage you. I'll help you make it over the bumps, the, the mountains, the valleys, the deserts, whatever it may be. If I can help you, I will. And where two or more are gathered in his name, he will be there with us in our midst. I pray that he will be in your midst and dwell inside your heart your vessel, a dwelling place for your creator, your savior, your provider, and he who loves you more than anybody on the whole planet. Amen.